our series of the fruits of the Holy Spirit and today we're going to be learning about peace. But first, shall we recite the memory verse again? Are you ready? For the fruits of the Spirit are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. I bet you're getting really good at that now. So, peace. What do you think peace is? You may have heard it like this. heard something like this. Da, 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 da. In tonight's news, the six year long battle between Mickey Mouse and Moana in Disneyland has finally come to an end. Mickey Mouse says in his statement, it is great to finally have a period of peace. The world talks about peace a lot, but the Bible has something different to say about peace other than just what your parents might say or what you might hear on the news. Peace isn't just about being quiet or not fighting. I want to introduce you guys to a funky word that the Bible uses to describe peace and that word is Shalom. When I was a kid in school we used to sing this song all about Shalom and it went a little bit like this. Are you ready? <coughs> shalom, Shalom, may peace be with you through all your days. In all that you do may peace be with you. Shalom, Shalom. You may have already heard that song or even still be singing it in your school assemblies now. And I bet you sing it a little bit better than I just did. But there's a line in that song that I really love. In all that you do, may peace be with you. Now, if peace was just about being quiet or not fighting, then that line wouldn't make any sense at all. Is God really telling us that we're never allowed to make noise? And the Bible is full of stories of God's people fighting for God's cause. So what does peace really mean? Shalom means so much more than those things. Shalom also means tranquility, harmony, wholeness, prosperity, welfare, completeness, and it can even be used to say hello and goodbye. Simply put, having peace, having shalom, means to be fully aware of who we are in Christ, no matter what we're doing. It means that you know in your heart who God tells you that you are. It means that you know in your heart at all times, no matter what's happening, that Father God is your daddy and that he loves you. It means that you know that he has a plan for you and that he's going to keep his promises. So what does it look like when we don't have peace? Let's do an experiment. I want you to get your hands, put them together and start rubbing. What can you feel? When it starts to get warm, that's how you know you're doing it right. This is called friction and this is like the opposite of peace. When we don't have peace we have lots of friction and the good thing about friction is that it causes static. Static is very sticky. I want to demonstrate what it's like when we've got friction in our lives and we get stuck with things that we don't want to be stuck to. To do this we're gonna need some balloons. <laughs> Balloons are notoriously sticky when they get covered in static. We're going to make these balloons super sticky and we're going to see what happens. So here's the situation. Somebody comes over to you and tells you you're ugly or you're stupid. We can choose to try and have peace about it and to remind ourselves about what God says about us, that we're beautiful and wonderful and that he absolutely adores us. Or we can get fractious about it, we can have friction and before we know it, we're stuck. We feel angry, we feel upset, we feel shame, sometimes we feel embarrassed. And there we go, negativity is stuck to us. Balloon! Here's another scenario. We could have made a mistake. We could have done something wrong at school or not listened when our parents told us to do something. 
We could have got told off for that. And then before we know it, another negativity is stuck to us. Instead of remembering that Jesus died so that we could be forgiven for everything and that he loves us even when we make mistakes, we just sit with lots of friction in our life, feeling shame and upset. Over time, when we don't remind ourselves that the Holy Spirit is there to give us peace in all of these situations, we can quickly get weighed down. It becomes difficult to move and all of that with everything covering us. But the good news about the Holy Spirit is that whenever we ask for peace, he'll come along and get rid of it. (laughs) Hopefully, not so scarily. (laughs) So what is there that you don't have peace for at the moment? Sometimes it can be really difficult to know what we need peace for. Those balloons that we saw earlier in the experiment can be really sneaky and they can attach themselves to us without us even realising. Sometimes we can think that we're fine, but actually something is stuck to us that we need to deal with. I want us to do something that's a really good habit to get into if we're wanting to become more like Jesus. We're going to ask the Holy Spirit if there's anything he wants to show us that we might need to deal with and have peace for. You might already have something in your head of something that you're going to want to pray for and deal with afterwards. And that's great. I want you to keep that in your head whilst the rest of us just sit for a moment and see if there's anything that the Holy Spirit wants to say. All right, let's ask him together, shall we? Holy Spirit, I ask that you would just show us if there's any of those balloons that we might need to deal with now. Is there any fear, any shame, any sadness, any hurt, any jealousy? any anger. God, would you just show us something that we need to pray for now? Amen. Let's just sit for a moment and see what he has to say. We're going to pray together in a minute for that thing that the Holy Spirit has told you about. And I have faith that he's told most of you something that he'd like to give you peace for. However, if you don't think he has said anything to you today, don't worry. God is still wanting to give you peace in your situation now, in your life as a whole. That line in the song says, in all that you do, may peace be with you. You don't necessarily need to be going through something difficult in order to have peace. God wants to give you peace all the time. So let's pray together, shall we? Father God, I thank you that you love us so much and you have all of these special gifts to give us when we're struggling. I thank you that you will give them to us even when we're not struggling too and that you just love to pour your blessing onto us. God, we lift up the things that you have said to us about needing peace for and we ask that you would help us to have peace in those situations. And God, I ask that we would hold on to that line that says, in all that you do, may peace be with you. And we would remember that you always want to give us peace in our daily life as we're hanging out with our family, as we're at school and at the park and walking the dog, that you can give us peace then as well. Amen. We have finished our third Fruits of the Spirit episode in this series and I can't believe how much we are learning already. If you've got any questions or any photos or any videos that you want to send in, then don't forget you can do that on my email address, which is holly at reachonline.org. Don't forget to let your parents know. I know a lot of you watch these videos without your parents. So if there's something that you want to show me, don't forget to let your parents know that they can reach me on my email. All right, I will see you next week for the fourth episode in our series of The Fruits of the Holy Spirit, where we will be discussing patience. See you there. Bye.